You're listening to The Profile. Hello and welcome to The Profile podcast. I'm Andy Peck. For the past 17 years, I've been interviewing leaders in the church and the wider culture. In the coming weeks, you'll be hearing the best of these conversations, plus some brand new ones as well. It was leadership expert John Maxwell who famously said, leadership is influence. Some have massive influence through their role as a leader of a church or business, a charity or a family. Others have influence in their neighbourhood, a network of friends or through leisure interests. It's our prayer that these conversations will help you in whatever spheres you have influence. This show is brought to you by Premier Christianity magazine, the UK's leading Christian magazine. Get full online access and the print magazine every month by becoming a subscriber. See special offers available now at premierchristianity.com. It's true to say that even the most ancient of churches in our land were planted at some point. Groups of Christians were intentional about forming communities and in some cases built a building in which to meet. With the decline of church attendance, sadly, within the UK, the planting of churches is likely to be an important part of our future. And I'm joined today by two people who have planted no less than three local churches. Their names are Judah and Rachel Cole. They're currently leaders of the Open Well Church in Liverpool. And I'm looking forward to hearing more about how they came to plant and how they went about it. So lovely to have you on the show, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Tell us a bit about your journey, um, both to to, to meeting together uh, and then eventually to being part of a church and seeking to be involved in church planting. So maybe, Judy, you could start. Great to be on with you, Andy. And um, Rach and I started, well, met each other at a church in Manchester. Um, I was in the church leading the youth group at the time in uh, 2003 and Rachel came as a student doing a master's in social work so we met at the church and we started dating although Rachel uh, talks about the fact that for six months we were in the same home group and I barely spoke to her apparently I was quite rude um, but I didn't see it that way. Anyway, we started dating and then um, I went to Bible school. So we did long distance for a year while I was on Bible school in Cardiff. And then we got married in 2004, uh, which this year is 19 years. We'll have been married. Um, And then once married, we both um, were asked to lead the youth ministry in our local church and um, for four years, we um, after that yeah, for four years, yeah, we were leading the youth in our local church. We began to have a heart for evangelism and began to do evangelism training with lots of churches in our network of churches. And um, after two of after two years, um, we were both on staff at the church, and um, and then after four years of being married. Um, two years of both being on staff at church, we were asked whether we would um, step down from leading the youth, uh, which we'd grown to, we used to get up to like 160 youth on a Friday night, a team of 25 youth leaders. We were leading the youth um, as well for all the, for our denomination. So all the youth groups would come together each year and we would lead all of that. Uh, But in 2008, um, we planted our first church and a little cool story is that I asked Rachel out in a pub in Salford Keys on March the 9th 2003 and I remember asking her would you go out with me and also I said to her where if this was to work out do you think we will be in five years that was March the 9th 2003 On March the 9th, 2008, exactly five years to the day, we planted our first church over the road from that pub in Salford Keys, uh, New Life Church in Salford. And so we've been pastors ever since for the last 15 years and planted three churches along the way. 
Well, so Rachel, uh, what sort of style of church were you? So when we started in Salford, I think we um, had never done it before. So it was one of those things where you're you're learning as you go, aren't you? And we had an amazing team with us. Quite a few uh, friends came with us from the church in Manchester. So we started meeting in our home um, and then we decided that we needed a, a bigger venue to meet in. So we, we looked for a venue that we thought was uh, going to be accessible for lots of people, for families. I was pregnant at the time with our first child. And um, we ended up hiring the local cinema in Salford Keys. It was the View Cinema. We had screen number seven and uh, the kids work was in the bar and it felt very, very uh, different from what we've been used to. We've been in a really big established church where there'd be like 800, 1,000 people. So suddenly when you've gone from something that feels really big and safe, it can feel you know, it can feel quite scary, can't it? Stepping out of the boat and starting something new. We were only in our um, mid-twenties. So uh, it was e- exciting and scary all at the same time. Um, but we had a good team around us. And um, and we just, we, we spent a lot of our weekends just out in the local shopping precincts, meeting local people, um, doing evangelism, doing outreach, um, just literally just getting to know the community and build friendships with local people. And then we'd have open homes in different people's houses every night where we'd put on food. People would share their testimonies and their stories of what God was doing and had done in their life. We'd have maybe some worship times. Um, and we just grew really organically through local people coming into our homes, meeting local people people in the shopping precinct and on the streets some people would just wander into the cinema because obviously 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 that's a public place as well um so it was great it was just you know the church was called new life and um and it definitely felt like there was lots of new life there we had lots of guys coming from muslim backgrounds um there was a girl in our church that had got saved um, from one of our uh, church members meeting her on a bus and um, she had a boyfriend in prison and um, we were able to uh, visit him and um, he came to know Jesus. And then when he came out of prison, we baptized him. And then there was a knock on effect of about 10 other ex-Muslim guys that came to know Jesus, didn't they? Um, so that was a really, really cool um, yeah, thing that God did when we were in New Life Church. Wow. Fantastic. Um I'm just trying to picture that there's a church in Manchester of about a thousand. You're part of a some a stream of churches or a denomination? Um, ministries Without Borders. Oh, yes. Okay. So the Ministries Without Borders. So you're, you're there. You're asked to plant a church in another. And, and uh, you, you mentioned that lovely story of, you know, five years since you'd um, you'd started dating at that place. W- what was it about Sil- Salford Keys particularly that, that had attracted the church to think they needed a church plant there so um rach and i um already lived in salford okay and in the first four years of our marriage we uh, lived in a council estate called audsall and um we actually did quite a bit of evangelism around where we lived um and so we used to get kids um, playing out on our street and um, so we eventually through chatting with these kids we invited them to a kids club at the larger church in Manchester where we were the youth pastors at the time and we started seeing kids from our street coming to the church um, to the point where we had to every week bring a minibus and one or two extra cars just to fit all the kids and teens that were coming from our street and the surrounding streets um, to our church. So it it felt like a little bit of a a move of God um, just on the streets where we lived. And um, in fact, it was great because uh, we would get our friends coming to our street to take teens for a McDonald's that had got saved and were now being discipled um, from where we were living so it felt like god was definitely moving and up to something and then after uh, four years of marriage and uh, we were asked by our senior leader uh, would we consider planting a church into salford um and and there was a sense that maybe that's where god wanted uh, to see a fresh expression of church and so that's kind of the story and and those not aware of uh, of kind of manchester area um, Salford is distinct from Manchester, even though sometimes it gets lumped together with it. Is that would that be fair? 
Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, Salford is a separate city in its own right. So it's got a cathedral, um, but it is literally right next to Manchester. But people in Manchester and Salford are very, uh, you know, very sure to say, oh, I'm from Manchester or I'm from Salford. They are definitely two separate. There's various models of church planting. Uh, some people do, you know, spend a few years kind of wandering, wandering around doing their research, doing their demographics, working out what the population is locally, etc., uh, the conversation we've had just suggests there's been a very relaxed, you kind of were there, you were sharing your faith, you were getting to know people. It was all kind of happening. They were bringing their friends. It, it the, I'm not, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying research is wrong, but it doesn't sound like that was the kind of approach that you took. I understand that research can be very helpful um, and help you get a grasp of um you know, the, the population for where you want to plant a church. But for us, I would say it was just being, you know, outside home bargains on a Saturday or outside Tesco on a Saturday and literally just meeting people. We would take bowls of chocolate and, and, flowers. Very, and flowers and very simple uh, things that we would just give to people and, and people would say, why? And we'd say, we just want to, we're just meeting people. We just want you to know God loves you. And we would get into conversation with people and um, we, we learned a lot about um, how to love people well through the first two years of, of planting a church in Salford. Um, but we also learned about hosting God's presence on the street. After a few Saturdays of being on the streets, we asked our worship leader whether he would not just perform, but when we'd go out on a Saturday outside Tesco, whether he would um, just worship. First Saturday, he began to simply worship God on the street. Um, we all became aware of just the presence of God um, mm -hmm. with us. And we found that we all had a greater authority. Just simply saying to people, God loves you. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, it was as if those simple words began to have a far greater impact. And um, through us stood just loving people, giving out uh, things and getting into conversations. We were we found an ease in leading people to Jesus. And we'd uh, very often bring people back to our home and baptize them in our bathtub. Um, and so for us, that's been the focus is God's presence, loving people and um, prayer, be in a community rather than maybe just cold, hard facts. Sure. Yeah. No, that sounds good. Um, and, and obviously there are lots of different outreach styles. There's the healing on the streets model. Um, there's uh, I think it's is it treasure seekers where you you pray and, and the Lord lays on your heart sometimes the um, characteristics of someone or a need or whatever it is. Yours seems even simpler than that, really. It's giving yeah. things out and, and, and that, you know, for, for some, that takes a lot of courage. Yeah, I think we've always tried to make it simple and accessible for everyone. So from when our children were literal tiny babies, they've come out on the streets with us. And um, and we've always just set up a place, whether we've lived in Salford or in Manchester, in Liverpool, in other places, we've set up a base where we give out free teas and coffees, donuts, bowls of chocolate, flowers. And uh, there's a psalm, uh, not a psalm, sorry, a proverb that says a gift makes room for you. And I think we've always found that as we've gone out there just to extravagantly love people with practical things, practical gifts, um, it's enabled people to just want to stop and talk to us, have conversation with us. And as we've got to know them, we've been able to explain who we are, that we're a local church, um, that God loves them. Um, and then we've been able to often chat with them, pray with them, share the gospel with them. And I think it's made for a lot of people in our church and people we've spent time with, it's made evangelism simple and dare I say, um, a lot easier than it could be. Um, so I think people that, you know, normally would have been quite scared or found it quite daunting, that thought of going out on the streets and meeting local people, um, it's, it's meant that everybody's been able to participate in it. Um, and, you know, even those that think they could never share their faith or pray with someone, you find that, you know, on, on, most of the time, by the end of the time being out with us, they will have prayed with someone, they will have shared the gospel with someone, won't they? Often during the summer for the last 10 years, um, we've spent three days where we've done some equipping in how to love and lead people to Jesus. And then we've gone on the streets and we've um, at times had three or four hundred people on the streets mm -hmm. in Liverpool giving out thousands of 
uh, bottles of water, chocolates, flowers, roses with a little message saying, God uh, loves you, you are loved. And through that, been able to pray with hundreds of people. And, yeah. and it's been common uh, and it's happened a number of times where we've gone into a, a local park in a quite a rough, different rough areas of Liverpool. And we've seen over 50 people giving mm -hmm. their lives to Jesus in just one hour. Um, and not, that, not just from us personally. Not from us, but as in like through going out with 50 or 100 people. And I think we've realised that um, we're all empowered for God's love to flow through us. Yeah. And then we equip people with simple questions to ask that helps lead people to Jesus. Yeah. So we often, uh, after us talking with many, many thousands of people, we've developed a simple question, which is this, have you ever asked Jesus to come into your life? And we found that that cuts through um, and, and really helps to um, understand where a person's at. Mm. And then from that, then we help people to give the gospel in a very short, simple way with no jargon um, in less than 30 seconds um, that Jesus came. He died on the cross. He rose again. And right now you can ask Jesus to come into your life mm -hmm. and he can take away your pain, your sin, and he can live in your life and you can trust in him. He'll never leave you. He'll give you his love, his eternal life. You can be free on the inside and clean. And then we uh, help people to ask a second question, which is right now, would you like to ask Jesus to come into your life? And we've seen over the years, many people who've been terrified of going out onto the streets, yeah. coming back and saying, today I led three people to Jesus in a prayer of commitment or. Yeah. Well, you're listening to the leadership show and I'm Andy Peck, and I'm chatting with Judah and Rachel Cole, We're talking about church planting. And if indeed, if what Judah just happened to say, and you are not a believer, and you listen to him, uh, there's no reason at all why uh, you can't respond, or perhaps find a Christian who can help you to respond to, to that lovely message that they share on the streets. You hinted at, at Liverpool there, so that kind of takes the narrative on a little bit. What was the transition to Liverpool? How did that work out? Um, yeah, we just were asked to um, consider moving to Liverpool. And at first of all, it felt like a, a bit of a heart wrench because we love Salford and we love people. Um, but lots, a, a big long story, but basically knew that it was right to come to Liverpool. So we've been here now for 12 years, 13 years. 13 years um, and absolutely love this city. Um, it's only 45 minutes down the motorway, but feels like a whole different uh, group of people. But we've learned to love Scouse as well. And uh, I think we've finally been accepted as one of them. Um, but yeah, we, we're loving the journey of um, of leading church. We lead a church currently called Open Well um, in Liverpool. We meet in a place called Toxteth, which is known for the riots in Liverpool. Um but yeah, we 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 absolutely love doing church here in the city, and it's, it's it's you know it's not always been easy leading church and planting church isn't always easy, but we definitely know it's where we're meant to be. So yeah, if Salford was where you were in a, as a home group, how did you think about where to go in a city like Liverpool, which has so many options for you? We again with Liverpool and we've planted two churches in Liverpool. Um, so with our first and now our current church open well, both we started in our home yeah. and we're a big believer in, in food. <laughs> and um, I would say, if you're going to plant a church, make sure food is right at the heart of what you do because food builds community uh, gathering, just eating together, sharing yeah. life together. That's how friendships are built. That's how, um, you can kind of build teams. And so in Liverpool, uh, we've been no different, just lots of food, being in our home. And, yeah. and through that process of prayer, God's presence um, and, and being together and growing in relationships out of that, we've then grown enough to then launch out into a coffee shop uh, or we've um, also met in lots of other venues in hotels and different places yeah. um, but I think the foundation if you like um, to kind of go into a public venue has always been starting in a home and, and kind of building relationships. And, and obviously Liverpool has has lots of churches of all flavours how do you find an appropriate place where you're not uh, treading on other people's toes um, but you're uniting, and I know 
Judah, you work with other local churches, so it's not like you are doing independent things. So talk to me about the dynamics of, of moving into a new area. I think when we moved to Liverpool, we realised that we were just bringing something extra to what God was already doing here in the city. So we weren't coming with all the answers, but we just wanted to add to whatever God was already doing. So we worked really hard to build genuine good friendships with other pastors across our city and our region. And, um, you know, we would spend lots of time when we first moved here and even now meeting pastors um, for coffees, for lunch, having them around for meals. And as we got to know them and um, looking for ways we could bless them and genuinely serve them when pastors had um, parents that were ill in other countries, we paid for air flights to for them to go and visit them. We looked for every possible way that we could really show love to the pastors. And um, I would say now that a lot of them have become some of our bestest friends across the city. So we don't ever think, oh, it's them and us. It's, you know, it's a competition. We very much see as we're all doing the same thing. We're just positioned in slightly different areas, maybe doing it in a slightly different way. Um, but we are genuinely championing these people on. We've worked in partnership with them in numerous events that we've put on or they've put on and we've come together. Um, like the Jesus Loves event we run in the summer. So I think we we absolutely uh, love working with the church across the city. And so it doesn't feel, for, I, I think Judah would agree, it doesn't feel like competition, does it? It feels like we're doing it together. Excellent. And and Rachel, you've um, developed your VIP evening day. Um, talk to me about oh. that. How did that come about? And uh, how have you been able to bless the local community? Yeah, so I think when we lived in Manchester, that was uh, it was like a God given uh, dream idea that I took to the leadership, um, and we started it in Manchester where we would bus in men and women from across our city that lived on the streets, lived in homeless hostels, lived in temporary accommodation, and the whole uh, dream and vision of it was really to show God's extravagant love in action that they would receive like a red carpet treatment they would arrive at um, a really lovely venue where they'd get silver service a uh, three-course meal they would get haircuts there'd be a pamper room where they would get completely pampered there'd be a clothes room with brand new or really good secondhand clothes brand new shoes they would get goodie bags full of toiletries and underwear and um, they would hear the gospel they would have opportunity for prayer they would um have opportunity to move into christian recovery homes there and then that very day if they wanted to um but it would just be like a imagine a wedding um but the most extravagant wedding you can imagine but for the most you know the most broken people probably we would come across in our city so we started that in manchester with just men then uh, sorry just women and then just men then we did a joint one where we had about 200 men and women then when we moved to Liverpool still felt like this was God's heart um for Liverpool as well so we've been running these events now for nearly 20 years um and um seen honestly hundreds and hundreds of men and women from across the city um come to these events uh, respond to the gospel encounter Jesus and we're in contact with many of them still now um, and it's been amazing we you know there's there's one guy in, that was in our church in Manchester and he came to know Jesus he lived in a homeless hostel came to know Jesus through um, uh, the VIP events and um, when he came to the the VIP event gave his life to Jesus Fast forward six months and he's there, part of the church, serving on their welcome team. And you wouldn't, if, if you met him on a Sunday morning, you wouldn't have even realised, um, you wouldn't even realise that he had, um, uh, you know, been homeless or been on the streets before um, because his life was so unrecognisable. And I think that's always our heart that people at these events, uh, the most broken people in our city would experience God's extravagant love in a practical way. They'd also then hear the gospel, respond to it. And their lives um, would be changed beyond recognition that you could then meet them in a local church uh, in Liverpool, in Manchester. And the VIP events are happening now all over the city, all over the country. Sorry. Um, and you would meet people and you wouldn't even know that that was their story. That was their background. Well, it's fantastic, uh, Rachel, to hear uh, about what you've been able to do. Um, we're coming to the end of our conversation, but I just um, a few thoughts for those listening, thinking this all sounds very easy. Somewhere at one level um you know what would you say to people considering church planting what 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 do they need maybe what do they need to be aware of i would say that um church planting is one of the hardest things you can do and also one of the most rewarding things you can do and i think it's really important that you don't take it lightly uh, but that it's something that you really pray about and talk to 
uh, people that you trust, talk to leaders in your local church uh, about the process of being involved in a church plant. Um, and I think church plant done well is about team. And so, um, you know, if you want to be involved in a church plant, then think about being part of a team. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be the leader in the team. It might be that um, you have a role within a team um, that enables a healthy church plant to, to happen. Um, and I also think it's good to maybe um, commit to a, an amount of time. So maybe you might think I'm going to commit for three years and then after three years, review it and be clear and upfront with um, those around you so that um, everyone is clear. And then at the three year mark um, for you to think and pray and, and um and consider whether to uh, carry on in that uh, local church plant um but church planting is um is an incredible way um to see disciples made yeah. and actually in the UK we need many hundreds and hundreds of new church plants uh, to reach millions of people um and so why not why not um, as you're working as a teacher or a doctor or um, as a stay at home mom or as a uh, whatever you're doing uh, during the day, why not um, at the same time be part of a church plant and help God's kingdom grow? Anything to add, Rachel? Yeah, I mean, I would say the same. I think church planting is amazing. It's an absolute roller coaster. Um, it's, you know, it's it's really hard, but yet incredible all at the same time. I think what Judah shared, having a team around you um, where you all have different strengths is so important. Um, and having good people to go to that can, you know, like spiritual mentor people that can really help you, disciple you, um, resource you, support you in the in the good days, support you in the challenging days. I think is so important and just knowing that God's called you to it because I always believe that if God has called you to do something he will always give you the grace to do it. fabulous well thank you to both of you for all that you've shared for your enthusiasm for how the Lord's been at work and uh, this may be a spur to some thinking to uh, get on and do what the Lord's been leading them to do so thank you that was my conversation with Judah and Rachel Cole of Open Well Church in Liverpool. I think Judah's words of wisdom regarding the importance of being very careful before you plant a church uh, and very prayerful as well are ones that we probably need to heed. I look forward to your company again next week. Bye for now. You've been listening to The Profile in association with Premier Christianity magazine.